Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and we're going to do part four of Web Basics. And in this tutorial, we're going to show you how to upload our Composer HTML file to the web. So let's review where we're at. We had created a Composer uh, HTML page with three folders, images, videos, and docs and an external page, a Web Basics 2. When you click on that, you see here's the basic website. Let's get that up and running on the web. And we're going to use FileZilla to do that. So let's bring up FileZilla. And the way you do that, basically, is you just go to your Start menu. You should have downloaded it previously. We showed you where that was and how to do that in Web Basics Part 1. So if you do, haven't done that at this point, go back, review those videos, and go ahead and do that. Go to uh, Programs and click on FileZilla and FileZilla. Okay, now we're in FileZilla. And let me resize it using Sizer. There we go. And let's fit that in the screen. FileZilla is a great program and it's actually very easy to use. And first thing you want to do is put in the host name. And as I said in the part one of this series, when you sign up for a server, you're going to get a host name. That's your www, whatever that name is, a username and the password. Let's use that now. In this particular case, my host name is www.nkuflc.org. My username is nkuflc. That's easy to remember. And my password, of course, I won't tell you that. And then once you put all that in, you just hit Quick Connect. And if my connection is working well, I should connect to the server. And I've indeed uh, connected to the server. And you can read uh, the different responses here if you want. Uh, I typically don't look at that very much unless I don't connect. And what's the difference here between Dreamweaver and FileZilla is typically the files that you're going to drag over are on the right side of Dreamweaver. However, with FileZilla, the, the files that you're going to drag over from your computer to the uh, server are on the left side. Now, if you want to know more about FileZilla, just go back and review those YouTube videos on FileZilla. And if you want to learn how to upload from Dreamweaver, review the Dreamweaver YouTube videos as well. What we want to do is go to our HTML folder, our public HTML folder. Let's click on that. And we're going to actually create a folder to put our website in. So let's create a directory. And we're going to call this Basics. Web Basics. And hit OK. And now that folder is there, and all we have to do is navigate to the, the correct folder and load it over onto this side. So let's go ahead and find that folder. And you can see there's a panel up here I need to pull up and pull down a little bit. And I can basically page my entire navigation system. Let's go to My Documents. And let's find Basics 2. There it is. And now we have Basics 2 right here. And here's my Web Basics folder. Let's open that up. And all I have to do is grab and move those over. So let's go ahead and move those folders over and drop them. And they'll transfer over to the server. And we can see that has been done successfully. Now we have to do our index trick. If I do not call this web page index, I'm going to rename it to index, they don't have to actually use the actual HTML name, but I want to shorten the address because users are very fidgety about typing in addresses that are very long. So I want to make it as short as possible and easy for that user to use. And I want to make sure I put in my .html here or it won't uh, be the correct file. And so we can see now that our index file is here. And so all we have to do is actually type in the web folder name uh, with the uh, server address. So let me show you what the address to the website is. Basically, let's bring up a browser and navigate to our website, which is now on our web server. So bring up a browser. And so the first part of the address is this host address right here, so we'll copy that.
And the second part of the address is basically uh, the name of the folder that the uh, program exists in, and that's Web Basics. So let's put a slash Web Basics. And let's click Return, and there it is. Our web page is now successfully on the web using FileZilla. Now, if you had difficulty understanding this, just go back and uh, review the FileZilla YouTube video and uh, go over this video as again as well. So I want to address one more issue. We have now put our website up on the web and that address is our server address www.nkuflc.org forward slash a web folder that we put on that server web basics and because we named the HTML file index we don't have to put the name of the file at the end here. It, the program automatically knows, the server automatically knows to grab the index file. So that's something you get automatic and it's typically done. The only thing you need to be careful about if you accidentally drop the wrong index file in the wrong folder, it'll erase it and put that new index file in there. So be careful where you drag and drop files into. But you know, I want to shorten this and one way to shorten this is to create a subdomain. Subdomains make the URLs shorter and nicer. Subdomains are URLs for different sections of your website. They use your main domain name and a prefix. So let's go ahead and create a subdomain. I'm actually now in my cPanel of SiteGround. And if you go in the cPanel of SiteGround and scroll down, you'll see a little icon here under domains called subdomain. So they make it automatic for you. Pretty easy to create a subdomain in SiteGround and they're free and they're unlimited and like we said earlier basically it's the name of the site with a prefix and we'll just call this web basics and there we go and we can go ahead and create that subdomain and you can see that it's been created and so the subdomain name is webbasics.nkuflc.org. And now let's bring a browser in and type in that subdomain name and see if our website comes up. So we'll go ahead and get it from here. We'll type in Web Basics. .nku flc.org and hit return and indeed our website did come up now the difference here in the difference here is that it's a lot easier to type in and sometimes you you may lose a user if your website is too long and difficult um, you know what but we're putting up so many websites on our end we're just throwing them into folders but there are sometimes other reasons why you want to use a subdomain and we'll get to that in further tutorials